If you're considering investing in a solar or battery storage system for your home, then stop right there. I want you to watch this video first because I'm gonna be teaching you the five key decisions that you have to make when choosing to go solar for your home. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and for the past 12 years I've been helping families achieve energy independence using clean renewable energy. Now if you're new to the channel, on Solar Surge you're going to find product reviews and comparisons on solar panels, batteries, inverters, um, as well as short educational videos like this one here where we're talking about the five key decisions that you have to make when deciding to go solar. And number five is choosing the right solar panel. Yes, choosing the right solar panel can have an impact on your overall solar success, but it's number five in terms of importance because frankly, we can achieve your power production goal using just about any of the top brands of solar panels that are available. Now the key thing that you want to look at is what is the annual production of the system? What, what is the total number of kilowatt hours produced over an entire year based on how the system was designed? And if you're working with a reputable company, they should be able to show you on their design software what their energy production forecast is for the first year and then what the anticipated degradation rate is going forward. Now again, that's the main goal, total kilowatt hour production for the year, and typically you can get there using different combinations of solar panels. But if you wanna focus on choosing the right solar panel itself, I recommend you focus on three main things. Uh, the first is just aesthetics. Do you, do you like how the solar panel looks? Because it's gonna be on your house for the next 25 years. Now, as we're recording this in late 2023, most of the residential solar panels have gone to that all black on black aesthetic. So that way, when you look at the panels, the finished product, it should just look like a sheet of black glass on your roof. Uh, but definitely make sure that you like the look of the solar panel because you're gonna be looking at it for the next 25 years. The next thing you can look at is module efficiency. And module efficiency is a way that you can easily compare apples to apples between different types of solar panels, how efficient they are per unit of, of roof area at converting sunlight into usable electricity. So the higher the module efficiency, the more power you're gonna get out of the same, the same roof area. Uh, and then the other thing to take a look at is the temperature coefficient. Now this, this really only comes into play for people that live in uh, extreme high heat environments, uh, but uh, a solar panel that has a low temperature coefficient means that it's going to, uh, it, its performance is going to hold up better even when it has to operate at extreme high temperatures. So those are some factors to look at in terms of the solar panels themselves. The top three brands that I recommend as of this recording are Qcells, REC, and Aptos. All right, the fourth most important decision that you're going to have to make is whether or not to install a battery backup with your solar power system. And so I think a key question that you want to ask yourself early in the process is, is my goal with solar, is my goal to just get the best dollar for dollar payback to maximize my financial savings? Or am I looking for something for true energy independence or true emergency backup purposes? You know, to be totally self-sufficient, you need to add battery storage to your solar system. However, batteries are expensive. And as of this recording, even adding a minimal battery backup to your solar power system is gonna cost you at least $10,000 more than just doing the base solar panels by themselves. So if you live in an area that offers a good one-for-one -one net metering program, where you don't have to store your own energy, you can just sell it back to the power company and they'll give you full credit, you may not want to install a battery backup with your solar. Again, it's, it's not gonna do anything to help your return on investment uh, if you have access to a one-for-one -one true net metering program. Now, on the other hand, if what you really want is emergency backup and energy independence, then you're gonna need uh, to add battery storage to your solar system. That way, if the grid goes down, you can run off solar during the day, you can charge your battery during the day, then you draw from the battery at nighttime, and then the next day the sun comes up, takes over, and recharges the battery. And you can repeat that cycle again and again as long as you need. So if you do want a true battery backup for energy independence, the top three bands that we recommend as of this recording are Tesla Powerwall, Enphase 5P battery, and the Franklin Whole Home battery system. Uh, by the way, folks, if you're in the process of getting estimates or getting bids for solar or battery systems for your home, 
Uh, if you need to get a price quote or if you already have a price quote and you just need to get a comparison quote, you can always reach out to us on the link below there, set up a quick call with one of our experts, and we'd be happy to get some pricing and some information for you. All right, the third most important decision is choosing the right inverter platform. Now, when we talk about a solar power system, the inverter is, is pretty much the central engine of that system. And choosing the right inverter platform is gonna determine a lot of what you have in terms of features and functionality on the system. Um, also, typically it's the inverter company that provides the app that you use to monitor and control the solar power system. So choosing the right inverter is the third most important decision, and it's the most important in terms of equipment selection. Now, the leading inverter brands on the market as of this recording are Enphase with their IQ8 microinverter system. That's where you have a small inverter on each solar panel, so you can track and control each solar panel individually. You have the Solar Edge DC optimizer system. Uh, solar Edge uses a DC optimizer device on each solar panel to, to handle shade mitigation, but then all feeding into a central inverter that does your DC to AC conversion. Uh, and then the third would be Tesla. And Tesla's new generation Powerwall 3 actually is a battery and an inverter built into one appliance. So it does the energy storage and the DC to AC energy conversion all in one step. But basically you're gonna to have to choose one of those platforms, either Enphase, Solar Edge, or Tesla. Once you're on that platform, then you're typically gonna get all the other accessories that that particular inverter manufacturer uh, makes available. So like if you're on the Enphase inverter platform, then you'd be using the Enphase battery if you wanted battery backup. Technically, the Franklin battery is interoperable with Enphase, but the trend that I'm seeing is that converging onto one ecosystem or one platform so that you have a single app and a single manufacturer and a single warranty, or at least a single point of contact for any kind of warranty or technical support issues. So Enphase has their inverter, their battery, their uh, electric vehicle charger. Tesla, of course, has their inverter and battery built into one appliance, Powerwall 3, as well as their own EV charger, their own app. And then Solar Edge Home Ecosystem, they have the same thing. They have the Solar Edge Home Hum Inverter, the Solar Edge Home Battery, the Solar Edge Load Controllers, and the Solar Edge, uh, the My Solar Edge app. So that's going to be important. Make sure that you choose the right inverter platform. Um, a lot of folks that watch Solar Search prefer Enphase more for redundancy reasons. You know, having a, a micro inverter on each solar panel versus a, a central inverter that could potentially fail. But if you look at Solar Edge and Tesla combined, there are many, many more uh, systems out there using that platform than the Enphase system. So Solar Edge is probably going to be the best overall value. Uh, Enphase is going to be tops in terms of just redundancy. Uh, and then, of course, Tesla, if you want to be on the Tesla ecosystem, you can use their Powerwall battery with built-in inverter. All right, the second most important decision is choosing the right financing structure. And when I'm talking about choosing the right financing, there's three main options. You can do a direct cash purchase. You can do a loan financing where you're, you're borrowing cash from the bank to pay the contractor and then you're paying the bank back over time. Or there's the lease financing. And as I'm doing this recording right now in December 2023, the lease financing is actually the most popular option because it's gonna offer the homeowner the lowest possible monthly payment, uh, especially in this environment, 2023, where we've seen interest rates come up at a, at a very rapid pace. Right now, most new homeowners that are choosing to finance are choosing to finance with the lease. So let's talk about the pros and cons of each. Uh, of course, a direct cash purchase, the advantage is you're generally gonna get the most competitive pricing and you don't have to worry about credit applications or making any monthly payments. You just write a check and you own the system outright from day one. Now, one potential downside with cash purchase is that you are gonna to have to put at least some cash down before you have anything to show for it. So most contractors, they may ask for as little as $1,000 down payment. Some contractors ask for 50% of the contract amount down payment. So, so the one downside there is you, you are gonna to have to start writing checks before you have a finished product. Uh, but again, as long as you have good confidence in your contractor, they're a good, reputable company, uh, that's generally gonna be the way that you can get the best, uh, most competitive pricing. Now, the loan financing is another nice option. Um, even for folks that plan to pay the system off soon, going the loan financing route gives you the ability to not, at least not have to write any checks or make any monthly payments until you have a fully functioning 
completed system. So the finance company kind of acts as a buffer between you as a homeowner and the contractor in that the, the bank is not going to pay the contractor until they can prove to the bank that the job has been completed. And so that way you as a homeowner, even if you wanted to do a direct cash purchase, you might want to use financing just to get through the construction phase. So when you go ahead and write your check, you're, you're writing a check for a, a fully functioning system that's already been delivered to you. Now, the downside of financing though is depending on where you are and which financing provider you use, you may have to pay closing costs to originate that loan. And so that means that that, that closing cost is either paid up front or, or typically what happens is it just gets rolled into the balance of the loan. So you end up borrowing a slightly higher amount than you would have if you had just paid cash directly for the system. However, there are some financing options out there that allow you to do this with no closing costs. So uh, if you're in, uh, watching this, if you're in Florida or Texas, there are actually some great financing options available that don't require any closing costs, which means you can get the same as cash purchase price, but have the flexibility of paying over time if you need so. Uh, again, if you're in the process of getting quotes or you need to get a quote for your system, feel free to reach out to us on the link below and we'd be happy to uh, have a quick call with you, chat through what your goals are, and then get some, some pricing and some information over to you. Now. The third financing option, of course, is the lease. And again, the lease is going to be the lowest monthly payment option. So if your goal is to not have to put any cash down and, and maximize your monthly cash flow, the lease is generally going to give you that option. The other advantage with the lease is that since you don't own the equipment, there's no risk of you ever having to pay to maintain the equipment. Uh, even if the contractor that does the original installation, uh, if they're, they're not able to make repairs in the future for some reason, the leasing company will just bring in somebody else, another one of their contractor partners, to make the necessary repairs. So the lease company is going to guarantee that system performance for the entire term of the lease. However, the downside is that typically you're going to have an escalator. And what the escalator means is your, your monthly lease payment is going to go up a little bit each year. A typical escalator is 1% to 2% per year. So let's say your, your, your original year one lease payment was $100 a month, then year two lease payment could be $102 a month. And you could see that payment go up. However, it's still better than sticking with the power company in the sense that your, your lease escalator is almost always going to be lower than the rate of energy price inflation. So even with the, the escalation, you're still gonna be doing way, way better than sticking with the power company. Now, the downside is it may be more costly when it comes time to pay off the lease. If you wanna just buy out the system outright, or if you, if you move, um, unless you can get the new buyer to take over the lease, you may have to pay off the remaining balance of the lease payments at the time of a sale of the home or at the time of transfer. So if you're planning on financing but paying off early, the lease may not be the best option. Even though you might get a slightly lower initial monthly payment, it may be more costly when it come, comes time to pay off. So if you're choosing to finance or if you're looking to finance just for short term, I would recommend to go with a traditional bank loan financing. If you're looking to just maximize cash flow and you don't need to worry about paying, paying the system off, then the lease is generally gonna give you the best cash flow. And finally, the number one most important decision in this is choosing the right contractor. Guys, I've, I've said it again and again, you know, in past videos and on a number of my different videos that choosing the right contractor is more important in this process than even choosing the right type of solar panel. The relationship you have with your solar contractor should not be viewed as, this is just a one-time project, they're gonna put the panels up and then I never have to deal with them again. You really want to look at this as a long-term partnership for the entire 25 years of the system warranty. This is the contractor I'm going to be working with to keep my solar system healthy, right? And so it's very tempting, especially if you're shopping online and researching online, it's very tempting to take the, the attitude that, well, all solar is pretty much the same. I should just be shopping on the cheapest price or the cheapest price per watt. That makes sense on the surface, but I've seen this and what happens over time. This is like technology, like any technology, at some point you're gonna need technical support, you may need repairs. You wanna make sure that you have confidence in that person that's on the other on, end of the phone to pick up and call when you have a support issue or a warranty issue. And that may mean that you don't go with the cheapest contractor in town. I mean, frankly, contractors come and go in solar all the time. And so you might 
be tempted to sign with a contractor that offers a cheap bid, but it might end up that they're, they're doing cheap work or the company may not even be profitable. They may be out of business two or three years down the road. And now you have to hire another contractor to come in to provide warranty service. So I, I can't stress enough choosing the right contractor, making sure they have a good reputation. I recommend going with companies that have been in business for 10 to 20 years or more. Uh, just very simply because the longer a contractor has been in business, statistically, the more likely they are to remain in business. Uh, and even if that means paying a little bit more for the original installation, having that long-term security and peace of mind, I think is worth it. And I think if you consider, would you hire the cheapest contractor in town to do other parts of the construction of your home? You, you really don't want the cheapest guy in town for this type of project. You want the, the partner that's going to give you fair pricing, but also is going to be the partner that's going to be a reliable bankable partner for you long term. So this has been a discussion of the five key decisions that you have to make when deciding whether to go solar. Uh, folks, as always, if you're getting good value from the videos that we have here on Solar Surge, make sure you give us a thumbs up uh, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this that come out, it'll come up on your homepage and on your feed and you can stay up to date with us. Well, folks, that pretty much does it for today's video. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon. All right. I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. Now, if you would like to have your product or your business or technology featured on the Solar Surge channel, feel free to reach out to us at the link below so you can set up a call with our media team to talk about your marketing goals and how Solar Surge can help you get there. Solar Surge is the leading online community in the U.S. residential solar and energy storage space. And so if you'd like to get your product, business, or technology in front of our audience, we can help you do that. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to our media team at the link below or email media at solarsurge.net.